Isn't that incredible? Only made for one year. This is so rare. Welcome to Car Shops and Collections, and today this is going to be fun. We have a very uh, rare vehicle we're going to see, a 1977 Pontiac Can-Am, and Mark is the owner, Reddish Storage Unit, so I got the code. You ready, Gene? We're punching the code here. Well, we don't want to reveal it. Yeah, yeah. No, don't show the code. Um, uh-huh. Uh. Oh, it's opening. Get in. It's, I'm telling you, this episode's going to be awesome. Have you ever seen a 1977? Pontiac Can-Am? Probably not, because they're super rare. Uh, all right, let's see here. Okay, uh, hard right, then left. And of course, uh, Mark, um, he has more than just the Can-Am, <laughs> as most car people do, we've discovered. Uh, hard right, hard left. There's Mark. What's up, Mark? How you doing, How you doing buddy? Good to see you. Oh dear lord, look at this. All right, say hi to Mark and see some uh, awesome cars. Black Corvairs. I just saw that. They just happened to be here at the same time. Gene, look at this, look at this. Some Corvairs over here, and then uh, there's the Can-Am back there. Of course, we got a Trans-Am. Something special under the tarp up there. <laughs> today's gonna be good. Hi, my name is Mark Civic, like Honda but spelled differently, and today I'm gonna show you my collection of cars. Well, Mark, thanks for having us, man. Oh, I really appreciate it. My pleasure. It. I, I love doing this stuff. I love it. Uh, Mark and I met at a car show about a week ago. Correct. I was walking through uh, the car show and I saw it right there. I saw the 77 Can-Am right. and I was drawn to it like a magnet and we chatted for about 20 minutes about the car and I said, we gotta come film you. That's why we're here. Now, there's storms all over Las Vegas and we're in Henderson, storms coming in. It was raining hard driving out here. Why don't we move the Trans-Am out first? Okay. And also follow up with the Can-Am. We'll kind of break them down. Okay. Hopefully beat the rain. Let's see what we can do. Right. Let's hope they start. I saw the video. I know that I know this is gonna start and the Can-Am was at the car show. I know that will start. So this is this a 1980? This is an 80. This is the little 4.9. There's the 400 sitting over there. See, how cool is this? The Mark was telling me that all the this whole entire warehouse over here, car guy, car guy, boat guy, car gal. This is all filled with, with cars. It's incredible. You got this thing dialed in, man. It looks good. It's getting there. So it's pretty much numbers matching. Right here? Yeah. When did you get it? I bought it about eight years ago out of Phoenix. The guy was gonna put the LS swap in it because uh -huh. it has a little engine, it has the 4.9, and decided he just didn't want to desecrate it, so I bought it. And uh, I lowered it an inch and a half. Those are 17 inch reproduction snowflakes. Okay. Um, I fixed all the trim. I did the interior. Yeah, it looks great. Yep. And that's my prized possession. It's got the original 8-track tape player in it with Donna Summer's period correct 8-track. <laughs> is that, is it, was that released in 1980? Absolutely. I, I only do it. It's got to be right. It's got to be period correct. Mark, as you can tell, is a car guy. Passionate. Interior's great, man. I do also like the... Uh, Speedometer stops at 85. Yeah, that was, you know, the, the car is probably 150 horsepower. Yeah. It was all detuned and it was kind of the end of the era for this car. It certainly was because they were supposed to stop at 80, but because of the popularity of, of Smoking the Bandit, they extended it for two the Smoking the Bandits, there, there's actually more black Smoking the Bandit cars now than were ever made. <laughs> How does that happen? But I think this is kind of like the bonus Trans Am because if, if it wasn't for Smoking the Bandit, in 80, they already came out with the next generation. I, I like this one because it's Ontario gray and sailcloth white, and everybody's got a black and gold one, mm -hmm. so nobody has this. Yeah, the color's unique. Yep. 
And we, we you're, you're backing out, but we did an episode, Robin here in town, she's got the um, pace car edition. Okay, so that's a, that's a 4.9 turbo. Okay, yes, yes. yes. So it's got the bulge on the yes, top, it's uh-huh. a turbo. And I think the turbo light goes off too. Yes, yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, it's turbo light. So this is just a regular aspirated, uh, I think it's a 305, but that's the 4.9, and I did find a 400 block that I build one day, and then I'll change it over. Change out, swap yeah. it out? Yep. But, but I, I, I like how it looks, man. The lines on this are in great, fantastic lines. You know, I'm just trying to buy my youth back. <laughs> how, this is uh, for gas? That's a gas door. Oh. That's actually the wrong gas door, but... And then, a, hidden right here, a key to your trunk. Yep. This is the wrong gas door? Yeah, that's a that's a wrong gear gas door. Didn't it shouldn't have the emblem on it, but ah. it was too nice to change. What year is the gas with the emblem on it? I don't know, but somebody yelled at me and told me. Was going to say someone watching right now? You can go ahead and, and leave in the comments if you notice that. It's the They'll tell you. Gas door, because people will tell you. Yep. And while you're looking down at the comments, feel free to subscribe to the show as well. So there's the there's the trunk. And some of them came with a spare tire. I don't think it's original, but it's. There's the jack and everything right down there. Yeah. The jack, cool. the, yeah. the, the jack and the jack is up underneath there. There's the decal. Uh huh. See little nuances like this. Well, and that's this that's really, what those and those are the bags. Yeah, for the T-top. These are the original ones, right? Yes, correct. See, I don't know. Little things like this, I think, are so cool to have these bags. Yep. Those from 1980. Still have them today. So most of them came with a space saver spare, the little collapsible spare. Oh, okay. So I have one in the garage. I just haven't changed it over yet. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I really like this color. This is my first time getting up close with this color. Yeah, yeah nobody has it. Everybody has. Everybody took a, a brown one or a red one yeah, or a green uh, one and painted them black. And this one is Ontario gray. That's the original color. All right, let's back out the Can-Am. The Can-Am? Yeah. Okay. And you were telling me too, at the car show, that this is your the, your first car that you ever bought. It's the it's actually the twin. When twin. I graduated Purdue, 1976, I had a job with IBM, and they said you have to have a junior executive car, an Impala, Galaxy, four doors, you know, whatever. Uh -huh. And I said, my first new car, I bought this, and I rolled into IBM with the splitters and the formula, and they go, what are you doing with that? And I go. <laughs> Don't worry. Yeah. I'll make my quota. So I found this in the high desert in California. A couple of was the body was solid, the engine was toast, the interior was crap. And I bought it, I dragged it home. So I'm in the process of finishing it now. That's that's neat, man. To have the a car like this that has its history with you. Yeah. To get, you know, your second, your second second go around with this car. Yep. And I think that says a lot about you. You graduate from Purdue, big job at IBM. They want you to get that corporate car. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> after a couple of years at IBM, I sold this uh -huh. and I bought a Corvette, which was a total no-no. Total no-no. Uh -huh. You can't have a two-seater car in the corporate world, right? No. Okay, within six months, the whole back row, including my manager, were all Corvettes. Yep. And there, there had to be eight or ten of us back there with Corvettes. So let me get this monster. Right, here it is. I mean, this is incredible. 1977 Pontiac Can-Am. Let's do this. There you go. Whoa, the original plates? No, I found them online. But still, 77. Yeah, well, I told you, everything's, it's in the details. You have a great attention detail. Back it out, and we're gonna give everyone the history on the Can-Am, which just blows my mind, the backstory on this car. Woo 
Isn't that incredible? Only made for one year. This is so rare. Sounds great. Everyone's been there, right? You're at a car show, you're walking around, and you see so many things you like, but there's that one. There's that one that grabs your eye, and that was this. This car was at AutoFest, which is held on a golf course. And I, think, I think I literally walked across the 18th hole when I saw it. I'm like, I'm walking up, started filming it with my phone, and there was Mark behind it, and we just started talking about it. And, uh, hold on. So there's the, there's the window sticker. There's the, this is the actual window sticker, the original one? Well, not the original, it's a reproduction. reproduction of it, yeah. So, let's talk about this. Okay. So why don't you kind of give us the, um, the brief background, the history okay. of this car, because it is so unique. So it's a one year only car, mm -hmm. 1977, and Pontiac was having problems with their Le Mans sales. Mm -hmm. So they gave it to the sales manager, Jim, Wangers is, was his name, uh -huh. and he had a thing called Motor Town in Detroit. This is the guy that was that was the godfather of the of the, the judge, GTO yes. and the, the GTO, judge. GTO. Yeah, right. so okay, he's got a background, he's right. got some history. All right. right. So they made them only in white, mm -hmm. okay, and they put the the Trans Am 400 6.6 in there. They made very few uh, California cars which had the Oldsmobile 4.3. They're even rarer. Okay. Okay, and it would be designated. This says TA 6.6. .6. If it was a California car, it'd say 6.6 .6 liter. So if you see the 6.6 .6 liter, it's even more rare. It's a 403 Oldsmobile. This is already rare. Yeah. That makes it even more rare. All right. So they had orders for about 5,000. They're all white, most of them red, some of them had tan, a couple black um, interiors. And they'd send them over there and they'd put the spoilers on the 1970s you know, graphic kits. The Can-Am package, you're getting the, by the way, the, the V hood, yeah. I think it's so neat, but the Can-Am package, you get the Can-Am stickers here, That's you the, get the striping. They cut a hole in the hood. Cut a hole? And that was the, that was the Trans Am 400 engine. Okay. So which at that it. time was about 200 horse, all right. okay? And they black out the trim. The striping comes all the way around here on the side. Yep. You get the louvers here. And then they would put, um, they, they were built with a Grand Prix dashboard. So it's kind of a, it's one of the original hybrids. It's, it's a Le Mans Sport Coupe, Grand Prix interior, and a Trans Am engine. It's Frankenstein. It's Frankenstein. It's my baby, it's. But we get to the back here, and this, this right here, this right here is the demise of the Can-Am. That's exactly right. That. Okay, so they were making these cars, and they had orders for 5,000. And the rumor, is, the history is it's either, either 1100 or 1377, they never figured it out. But the spoiler mold broke, and General Motors said, we're not fixing it. We're not doing anything. The machine that makes the spoiler. The, the mold, uh, yeah. It breaks. Breaks. But instead of fixing the machine, they just say, we're done. Well, because it was digging into the Grand Prix sales, okay. they said, no more, no mas, that's it. That's it. Right. At that point, so, we're either 1100 or 1300 made. Right. So. I actually had two of them. I found another one. Did you really? I'll show you a picture of it. Um, so there were a bunch of white ones that were unfinished. Mm -hmm. And so the dealers were buying them up, trying to get these parts to finish them, but that it wasn't happening. This was a, a playoff between Trans Am and Can Am. This was actually supposed to be like the GTO, because mm -hmm. the GTO had failed at that point. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like super up Nova. It was done. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. And they, so you have the, the Can-Am racing series is why they went with Can-Am. Yes, yeah, Trans-Am, Can-Am, right, so. And at the time, too, so Pontiac, the, the GTO was gone. Pontiac had the Firebird, the Trans-Am, and then this was gonna be the next evolution of their muscle cars. Right, right. Orders, I was reading, after you and I met, I'm, and now I'm reading about the Can-Am, because the, the history's crazy. 15,000 orders is what they wanted. People wanted yes. this car, yes. and they said, we'll do 5,000. They're cranking out 30 to 40 a day when the machine thing breaks down and they can't finish the car, that's and right. that's it. And the brass said no more. Can we see inside this? Absolutely. The let's let's, do, let's do it on this side. That, that one gives me just a tad bit of problems, as old cars you do. You have all your cars, you're telling me. So you want to do the trunk while we're well, back? Yeah, sure, let's see the trunk. But you have, because you're from Chicago, that's where that's you go right. with Illinois and all of them. So here is, oh, there's some junk in there. There's this, there's a space saver. That's the canister of gas. 
and the and that's the original from 1977. Yep, and a and a spent gas canister. Was there a lot of rust in this? There was some. I'll show you pictures. You get because down here in the bumper, the water builds up or underneath? Well, there was a little rust in, the, I'll show you, the car came out of Florida and it was covered in surface rust. The interior was trashed, uh, but the car ran and drove and uh, I got it. And I, I, I had a body shop here in town. They, they painted this one, they painted that one, and they painted the, the Corvette. And I'll tell you about the Corvette because Sherwin-Williams sent Tex out to do the Corvette. Did they really? Yeah. Who in town painted it, do you want to say? It's called Valley View. The guy's name is Daniel. Mm -hmm. He's not really doing... It's a great right. job. So then the, um, the striping, you added that? I found it online. There's a place called Phoenix Graphics. For any car you want the graphics, they have Can-Am, Trans-Am, Kudo. But this is, this is a real Can-Am. This is a real is a numbers, real yes. Okay, this is a real deal. Look at the van, it's gonna be the real Can-Am. And the Grand Prix dash. Right. Elegant. It's, and, there's, there's a cool thing about it. This is, and this is rare because this one, well, all of them are two-speed automatics, no manuals. This one doesn't have a console. Most of them had a floor yeah. shifter and a console, so. Does this door open? It does, we just have a little issue closing it. Oh, then I won't open it. No, I, we can do it, I just. The, the doors weigh more, more than most modern cars. So. You can open it, go ahead. Oh, it's locked. That is a heavy door. That's what I said. said it, this, that is a heavy door. The, the bearings are, bushings are shot, that's why. Oh, man. I can already tell the back seat. Yeah. It must be comfortable. The front seats are incredible. Well, they, the reason they did this is they, they made this car because it had a back seat. So it was kind of evolution after the Trans Am, after you outgrew the Trans Am, you still wanted something, but now you're married and you put the kids. You got a couple of kids, you would go with the can -Am. Ford did the same thing with the Mustang. Is this the uh, sports steering wheel? That's the sports steering wheel, that's the option, yeah. Mark, this is, this is, this is really neat, man. This one had an eight track tape player, which is in the garage, I'll show it to you. I, but I just put the regular, Oh, so you swapped it out, but this is... Yeah, because that one doesn't work yet. AM, FM slider here. 77 AM radio is still king. Your lighter right here. AC? AC. It had, it's an AC car, although the AC is missing. Heater with a defroster. Oh, your instrument panel up here. What is the uh, push to the far left on? Those are wipers. Oh, wipers. It says right there. So the parts for this car are impossible. I'm sure. There are none. The, yeah. So I had it at the body shop, right? And they had stripped it all down. I'll show you some of the pictures. And I had left the country for a couple months. Mm -hmm. And I came back and I said, where are my bumpers? And they go, well, they were, they, you know, they didn't know. They lost them. They lost the bumpers. The actual can and bumpers they lost. Those them. bumpers were missing from my car. So I got on the internet and I'm looking because there are no, and there's a Desert Valley Auto or something down in uh, Phoenix. Mm -hmm. They had just dragged in a 77 Le Mans. I said, hold it, I'll be right there. I jumped in the car and I drove from here four and a half hours mm -hmm. down there. I bought both the bumpers because I didn't have any uh, bumpers. All right, uh, can we see the, um, the final vehicle that you got inside there? Yeah. All right, so we got right here under the cover 1978 78 Corvette pace car. Yep. And I was working for IBM at the time out of Indianapolis. So I saw this car. Did you see it at the, at the Indy 500? I was at the Indy 500. That was part of the deal when you lived in Indianapolis. So you're at the, you're at the race in 78. I'm 23, 24 years old. I'm at the race. I'm at the time trials, because that's what we all did. And um, I was in love with this. This car is number 666 of the produ production run, right? When did you buy this? About eight years ago. And so when I went to the DMV and I asked for 666, mm -hmm. I got a lecture. Oh, for the plates? Yeah, because it's the biblical yeah. whatever. It's the devil's number. And at that point, we had a little discussion with the uh, the manager, 
who became my friend and I sold his house. Oh, did you really? <laughs> yeah. Can I say how cool this is, Mark? This really is, um, this is something special. We've done a lot of episodes and something about this is really cool, man. From the Can-Am to the Trans-Am to what we're about to see. You wanna jump on the other side? Whoa! So this one, check this out. 1978 Indiana plates. Whoa! So I, the body shop painted it about three times and it kept not being right. And finally they got the Sherwin-Williams tech guy to come out and do it. Do you want to back this one out or you tell me you, you want to keep it in here? Whatever you feel more comfortable. I'd like to keep this one in here. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. All right. 1978. So this is the 25th anniversary of Corvette in 1970. That's correct. So that makes this even more special. Right. So if you come around here, Gene, if you come to the front here, this is a really cool thing. Little nuances of this car I love here. You can see right here. Yeah, that, that, that 25th, 25th anniversary. anniversary of Corvette. The C3, so it is the pace car edition. 78 was the very first year that they used the Corvette as a pace car. Uh, I think that's correct. Yeah. And they just used it again this past year here in 20. Yeah, they've used it a, a yeah. bunch of times. Since then, a bunch of times, but this was the first year. Those are the actual track passes and the festival passes that were under the seat when I took the car apart. You found these inside the car? Yeah. So it's... Okay. So, so one got it on the track and one got it in the festival, which was the parade. That's neat. So was the pace car edition available before the actual pace car, before the race itself took place? Um, it was, there were, or there were 6,400 made at one for like every dealer. Okay. And they made an L48, and then the big one was the L82. So it's pretty rare to have the L82. It's better to have the yeah. L82. And it came with the silver anniversary interior, and this one has AM, FM, and CB radio. You get the CB radio option? Sure. Yeah, the microphone the, the, is on the side there. I love the color, the black and the silver. You got the red striping around it as well, which is so neat. So the same company that did the decals for the Can-Am, uh -huh. the Formula, and this car is Phoenix Graphics. I love them. They, they, I tell them what I want, and they send me a graphics kit. But, then, but this is a real pace car. This is a real by the numbers, and this is numbers matching. And sadly, or ironically, those are the original tires. But one thing too, but also about the, the curved glass here, so cool. This was on the field at the win. I was invited in last year's uh, Concorde d'Elegance. Yeah. Jay Leno was a grand marshal. Yes. I went down the boulevard with Jay Leno. Uh, uh, this was, to me, this is it. This is the Super Bowl of all car stuff. Can we do like, um, like a lap around the building in the Can-Am? Yeah. You wanna do that? Let's do that. Gene wants to sit in the back seat. What do you think would have been the history of this car if they didn't have that problem? And they could... It's got, it's got some pickup. Somebody changed the rear end because the speedometer's off. Do you think this car would have lasted it would five, have, 10 I, years? I, it would have gone at least three, four years, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Just want to get a feel for our rides. Or we could open it up. This is cool, it's hard to see, but there's off in the distance, there's a strip here in Las Vegas. We're in the outskirts of town. We've got a big following in Chicago, by the way. So oh, good. yeah, the city of Chicago is gonna like this. Well, tell them I went to Homewood Flossmark, class of 72. Class of 72? Yeah, I'm an old guy, almost 70. You need to hang out, are you serious? This is, this is my daily, this is, this is a 510 horsepower supercharged V8 convertible. And what year is that? 12. That closes That's pretty good. That closes good there. Mark, thank you so much. This, this has pleasure. been a treat. My uh, pleasure. I love this stuff. Well, it's the, quite the collection you have. Thank you. It's, uh, thank you. it's impressive and, and such great history in these cars. And I mean, I, I think there's probably more Can-Am fans now after watching this episode because once you told me the whole story, I, I fell in love with this car. Well, thank you for watching. Thank you, Mark. My pleasure. Um, we appreciate it. And everyone, we'll see you next week. This is good. If you want your car, shop, or collection featured on the show, then shoot us an email at cars, shops, and collections at gmail.com. That's cars, shops, and collections at gmail.com. And thanks for watching, and be sure and subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes of Cars, Shops, and Collections.